This is the third and final part of an introduction to programming GPUs using custom operations with Max and Mojo. In this video, we will cover how to compute the popular Mandelbrot set. We'll begin by giving a mathematical definition of the Mandelbrot set, then show how it can be implemented as an accelerated, embarrassingly parallel computation using Mojo. Finally, we'll complete the example with a short discussion of balancing the cost of moving memory between a host and device against speedups of parallel computation. As with the previous examples, the code in this video will run on both CPUs and GPUs. Officially supported hardware includes Ampere A series, such as A100 or A10, or Ada L4 series data center GPUs. Unofficially, we also support NVIDIA, 30, and 40 series consumer GPUs. Finally, NVIDIA GPU driver version 555 or higher is required to run this example. To get started, you'll need to install Pixie, an open source package manager. You'll also need to clone the Max Recipes repository and change into the Max Recipes Customs Ops Introduction subdirectory. Then you can run the Mandelbrot example using Pixie Run Mandelbrot. The Mandelbrot set is a two-dimensional fractal whose membership is determined for every point in the complex plane using the iterative function z of n plus 1 is equal to z n squared plus c, with the initial value of z being 0 for every point. For each point, this computation will either converge to 0, in which case it is a member of the set, or it will diverge. The boundary between convergence and divergence of the Mandelbrot set is a self-similar fractal with an infinitely complicated boundary that reveals progressively ever finer detail at increasing magnification. Typically, when we compute the Mandelbrot set, we will establish a fixed number of iterations where we will stop the computation. Any point that hasn't diverged past some threshold will be assumed to be a member of the set. One important aspect of the set is that membership of one point does not depend upon any other point in the plane, which means that for a given grid, every point can be computed independently and in parallel. Let's see how we can do this with Mojo on GPUs. Recall from our simplified GPU architecture that the GPU is composed of several streaming multiprocessors, which themselves are composed of many thread cores. This is in comparison to a CPU, where a small number of cores may only be able to execute a handful of computation with its SIMD vector processing units. While GPUs and CPUs both offer computational parallelism, the number of available cores for work on GPUs is much higher than the number of available cores on CPUs. With these similarities in mind, let's take a look at how to implement computing the Mandelbrot set in Mojo. We begin by opening the file mandelbrot.mojo. As with the previous example, we register our custom structure with the graph compiler and define a static method with a single output tensor. The size of this output tensor implicitly defines the size of the complex plane. The remainder of the complex plane is specified by the input variables, which include the minimum values for x and y, as well as the scaling factor of the grid. We also define the maximum number of iterations for convergence. This full collection of input and output values uniquely defines the computational plane that will compute the Mandelbrot set for. We then define an inner function, elementwise Mandelbrot, that takes as its input a set of row and column indices. These integer values are used to define the location of the computation in the complex plane. We compute our x position in the complex plane by taking the minimum value of x, adding the column offset to it, and then adding to that a vector ranging from 0 to the width of our data type. The IOTA function will automatically generate this vector for us. This will compute the full set of x indices for our computation. We then multiply these values by the x scale to generate the x coordinates. We do a similar computation for the y variable. We take the minimum of y, add the constant y position, and multiply by the y scale. Note the difference in the x and y computations. To take advantage of memory layout, 
we're running the Mandelbrot computation as row major. The x positions are variable across the width of the computation, while the y variables are fixed. We then initialize our position in the complex plane to the variable c with Mojo's complex SIMD type and the values cx, cy. We also set an initial value for the variable z to 0. For each value in the SIMD vector, we set the number of iterations to 0, and then we also create a logical mask which is used to control which values we run the Mandelbrot iteration on. To begin with, we want to run the computation against every index in the vector. As the computation runs on, the individual values in these masks may be set to false, which means that the computation won't be run again against them. Now we enter the computational loop, which at most will run max iterations. If all of the values in our computational mask are false, then we can break out of the loop. We then look at the current value of z, determine if the previous iterations diverged, and set the mask for any values that have crossed the divergence threshold. In this case, the divergence threshold is 4. Now, using the mask, we increase the iteration count for every point that will run another iteration. Finally, we compute an updated value of z, where z is equal to z squared plus c. Once the max iterations is complete, or all of the points have diverged, we return the number of iterations as a vector. There are a few things that you'll want to note for this particular computation. On CPUs, we're able to use the full width of the SIMD registers. Now, while it's possible to run SIMD computations within a GPU, that's not implemented by the foreach method that we use to dispatch this computation. Switching over to Mandelbrot.py, we follow the conventions from the previous examples. First, we define a helper function that can render the Mandelbrot set to the terminal. We also define another helper function, create Mandelbrot graph, where we construct our graph using the custom Mandelbrot operation that we registered with the graph compiler. Within the main function, we define the complex plane that we want to work in, assign the device that we want to run on, a GPU if it's available, or a CPU if it's not. We configure our simple graph. We set up the inference session, compile the graph, execute the calculation on the target device, and then copy the values back to the CPU. We can then use our helper function to render the Mandelbrot set to the terminal. One thing you should note in this computation is that there's a trade-off between the cost of copying the data to and from the GPU and performing the calculation. For smaller planes, it's more efficient to run the computation directly on the CPU to avoid the overhead of copying the data back from the GPU to the host device. As the size of the set increases, there will be a crossover where the acceleration you get from the parallel computation on the GPUs will be much faster than the amount of time it takes to copy the data from the GPU to the CPU. As an exercise, you can find the crossover point for yourself by profiling the compute and copy steps for different set sizes for both CPUs and GPUs. To find this example and more, head over to builds.modular.com, where you'll find hundreds of ready-to-run models, Mojo libraries written by our developer community, and recipes to help you get started on your next big ML project. We're also excited to announce the launch of GPU Puzzles. These progressive exercises are an ideal way for you to learn GPU programming with Mojo, starting with the fundamentals and building into the powerful layout tensor model. If you have any questions or would like to know more, head over to forum.modular.com, where you can connect with other enthusiastic developers and learn more about GPU programming with Mojo. In future videos, we'll be diving more deeply into programming GPUs with Mojo across a variety of different devices. Thanks for watching.